And the Oscar goes to Hair Love, Matthew H. Harry and Karen Rupert Oliver. That Hair Love was done because we wanted to see more representation in animation. We wanted to normalize black hair. There's a very important issue that's out there, it's the Crown Act, and if we can help to get this passing off at these states, it will help stories like DeAndre Arnold, who's our special guest tonight, stop to happen. <laughs> this award is dedicated to Kobe Bryant. May we all have a second act as great as his was. Thank you. He graduated from Loyola Academy in Wilmette played in the NFL, and now he's an Oscar winner for his animated short, Hair Love. We're celebrating Black History Month with filmmaker Matthew A. Cherry. Come on out. Great to meet you. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Chicago is proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. What is Super it like proud. to hear that to hear those words that you are an Oscar winner? How does it feel? Is it sunk in? Still doesn't feel real. Um, you know, that happened a couple of weeks ago. I went straight into a job. I'm a, I directed an episode of uh, the Blackish spinoff Mixedish. Yes. Um, I had a, okay. <laughs> a 7 a.m. call time. Uh, <laughs> 7 a.m. the day after that? Oh, yeah, yeah, the same day. So same did you day. take her with you? I did. I had to bring her to set with me. <laughs> I think we have a picture of that. We'll there we show go. that. Yeah. yeah. And, and where's the Oscar going to live? Um, you know, right now at the house, um, you know, until we get the office set up. But yeah. So special. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, tell people what the film's about because we watched it last night. This has been a hot topic yeah. in the news lately. We've talked about it on the show, but mm -hmm. there's a couple of things that this film represents. Yeah, you know, um, Hair Love is about a black father trying to figure out how to do his daughter's hair for the first time. Um, you know, uh, there's a special event that particular day, and uh, you know, uh, Zuri, who's the daughter, she's really excited about it, and mom is away, and uh, he has to kind of step up and figure it out. And, um, you know, Hair Love was really born out of, like I said in the speech, wanting to see more representation, but also um, wanting to normalize black fathers. You know, so often black dads get a bad representation in mainstream media, and also wanting to help normalize black hair. Right, I feel like you squeeze. I feel like you squeeze so many different <laughs> themes yeah. into this six minutes, six yeah. and a half minutes from the from the story of just hair and black hair and a dad having to tackle all that hair to actually how the shrinkage. I don't know if y'all know the shrinkage is yeah. real, it's but when real. you had to snap real. back and then you were in the fight and the yep. rain. I mean, there was someone even from the mom at yep. the end yep. going from that big beautiful hair and so many mm -hmm. women thinking their hair is everything. Right to then seeing her lose all her hair, yeah. but yet be just as beautiful. Yeah, you know, it really, at the end, it really was just about, you know, no matter what your hair looks like, be that curly, be it straight, be it no hair at all, you know, um, you're still beautiful. And um, I think I just think that we have to do a better job of helping to normalize all different types of hairstyles um, because, you know, the Eurocentric standard of beauty isn't the only one in the world. Yes, right. say that again. <laughs> it, was, it was so powerful that you brought DeAndre Arnold, the student who was told he wasn't gonna be able to walk at his graduation because he had dreadlocks. Yeah. Uh, you got to win the award in front of him, and yeah. now change is being made. Yeah. Explain the Crown Act because states are now adopting that. Yeah, you know, so the Crown Act, um, it already went into law in New York, California, and uh, New Jersey, and basically it's a law that helps end hair discrimination um, for black Americans in school and the workplace. You know, as you guys know, oftentimes uh, you can't wear your natural hair to certain work environments, um, and now we're seeing it more with schools. There's that one disturbing video of that young boy who was a wrestler who they made him cut his locks right yes. before the match. Yes, yes. Uh, so we're just trying to help end that, and this is a law that if it gets passed in all 50 states, uh, we're hopeful that it'll help change, uh, change it for good. Right. Yeah. Now, how does a former NFL <laughs> player go from the football field to filmmaking? Well, you know, um, for me, I was always interested in it. You know, I went to Loyola Academy in Wilmette. I'm from Chicago, um, you know, represent. Uh, <laughs> um, and, you know, and, and I played three sports in high school, but I was, a wow. still, a, I was still a part of the audiovisual club when I was in high school. I majored in radio TV broadcast when I went to the University of Akron. And so I knew when I got done playing sports that, uh, you know, I was going to try to do something in entertainment. Didn't know exactly what. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and here I am. Yeah. Here you are. I, I want to read way. a couple of tweets okay. because you talk about a vision. <laughs> 2012, June 1st, you 
tweeted, I'm going to be nominated for an Oscar one day, already claiming it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you get nominated for an Oscar, <laughs> and Kelly Carter tweets out, Matthew A. Cherry becomes the second former professional athlete after Kobe Bryant to be nominated for an Oscar. To that, Kobe responded, let's go. Mm -hmm. And that was two weeks before he passed away. Yep. Then you win the Oscar, and it was important for you to recognize Kobe. Yeah, you know, um, Kobe, I think he, met, he, he means a lot to everybody, you know, um, incredible champion in basketball, but I think the thing I was most excited about was his second act, you know, him being a storyteller. He wasn't shy about mentioning, mentioning that in interviews and the fact that we both were nominated in the exact same category, right. and he shouted us out a couple years prior. Um, you know, I just felt really compelled to just honor him, and, um, you know, such a tragedy, you know. It was such a tragedy. Mm -hmm. And you have, a, you have an event tonight that we want yeah. to mention. Yeah, yeah, we're doing this really great event uh, at Macy's, uh, for, which is right in downtown uh, for Black History Month. Uh, Going to be sh uh, screening the short film and also having a discussion, kind of talking about the inspiration behind it. Um, and yeah, you know, guys, come, come on through. Uh, it starts at 6 o'clock, and I hope to meet you guys. Well, I hear when you come back home to Chicago, which is not often, right. <laughs> that the number one thing you do when you get off the plane, which is a guy after my own heart, is go, go to Harold's Chicken. Hey. <laughs> right, you went last night. I did not. I haven't you gone yet. Go? I, oh, well, I'm, gonna... I'm good thing you didn't oh, because we thought about you. We brought it to you. We Thank wanted you to this. make sure you got right. your hair on. There we go. There, there we go. go. There you go. All right. All right. Dig in. Enjoy right. that. Right. <laughs> All right. You can see Matthew tonight at Macy's on State Street and be sure to pick up a copy of his book. It's also a book, Hair yeah. Love. Yeah. Or watch the film <laughs> online. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.